I'm surprised you decided to stay Miss Stem for this. If I tried to figure out for it, you'd only have caught up with me. You wouldn't have gone out of Chipping Claghorn. Are you going to arrest me? No, I would like to know where your brother is first. I haven't the faintest idea. If this is misguided family loyalty. I honestly don't know. Honestly, I imagine that's not a word that comes easy to you. I know how you must feel that. Please, that. your brother, Miss Stemportis. I haven't seen him since we were three years old. When my parents split, it was decided that I should go with my father and pick up my mother. Let's try something different then. Where is your father? Try the moon. When I was just about old enough to take care of myself, he left me in Istanbul. Where? I've worked my way back here. Your mother? Believe me, I'd love to know. I've searched everywhere for her. She made a good job of disappearing. I even went to Scotland to get some information. You went to see Belle? Why not? She's my aunt. I also hoped she might help me, but it's no use. She's not a part of this world anymore. And then I got to thinking about my uncle. Of course, I knew he was very rich. It occurred to me, if Aunt Belle died, I was probably his only surviving relative. I went along to Somerset House and looked up his will. Was I surprised? I looked everywhere for anyone who even knew Lenny Blackbox. And then I had the most incredible stroke of luck. Through an acquaintance, I managed to meet Patrick and his sister. When the swap was suggested, I had to stop myself sounding too eager. I'm sure you had to hold yourself back to keep from waiting for the opportunity to take a pot shot at me. Shipping Clerk Horn, 87. One moment. The inspector is for you. Hello, product here. Yes. What? Well, keep me informed. But the disturbing development, Miss Marple has been missing since she left here this morning. That's nearly seven hours. Here are Mrs. Spettenham and her son, Edmund Spettenham. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> what is it now? Changed my will in your favor. 
book. Yes, and that scared me stiff. You said there was a very good reason for doing it. I thought that you had discovered who I really was, that you were boarding me up and trying to get my uncle's money. And here you were coming to kill me. I, it never occurred to me, oh. even though I felt I was more entitled to it than you. There it is. I am pissed, and I'm glad you know. You two have been seeing quite a lot of each other, haven't you? Yes, well, there's no need to suspect Edmund anymore. Isn't there? Mrs. Swenton's a struggling young writer, not yet published, who would very much like to marry a rich woman. That is not <coughs> true. You're a devil to your eyeballs. Nonsense. And I can prove it. The bank, the bookmaker. So what does that mean? A rich wife would have solved all your problems, wouldn't it, Mr. Swetton? And but in order for her to be rich, Miss Blackwell had to die first, so you did something about that. No, Shall we begin with your meeting Rudy, Shirts, and Turpin? Mr. Swindon! <laughs> you won't get far. You'll need to see your solicitor as soon as possible, Mrs. Swindon. I realize this is a great shock. I will see you down at the station. It won't take long. Mrs. Simmons, would you take Mr. Swindon home, please? I've called to a doctor, would do any harm. Lindsay, <laughs> you are a magnificent liar. <laughs> to the left, I'm sorry to have given you such a fright. <laughs> you are a very clever girl, Lindsay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I We'll get you some coffee and look tired. That would be nice. Okay. Black and strong with some milk, please. <laughs> the way you drink it all the boat. <laughs> well, you can relax now, Mrs. Blackwell. <laughs> Thank God. Perfectly safe. You might have warned me you'd arranged it. Well, then you wouldn't have reacted as you did. It was a little unorthodox, but it worked. But what if it hadn't? Well, we'd have been in a bit of a mess, wouldn't we? And what about Miss Marple? Where is she? Perhaps there's some news down at the station. I, I just hope to go. She hasn't interfered. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Goodbye, Inspector. Here you are, Miss Blacklock. Nice and strong. I put only a little milk in it. One drop or two. <laughs> I do myself a liberty and I make some for me too. Of course. Now, Miss Blacklock. Yes? We have a nice little chat. Oh? Yes. I need money. Lots of money. Why tell me? I think you will help me. But, Missy, I haven't got any money. None to spare, that is. Oh, but soon you will be rich. Very rich. And when you give me lots of money, I don't think I shall. Oh, yes, you will. You see, I help you, so you help me. But, Missy, I pay you to help me with the cookie and the house. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Just now, I tell a big walk up with the inspector. Only it wasn't a lie. You don't know what the truth is, Missy. Oh, yes, I do. The inspector, he come to me and he said, Nipsey, you are a wonderful liar. And I said, yes, it's true. <laughs> you tell lie for me, he said. You say, you look through the keyhole and you see this black lock. Only, it wasn't a lie. I did see you through the keyhole. 
Leopold. You did your bit very well, Missy, but I shan't be paying you for it. I saw you through the keyhole with a gun in your hand. You will pay me, and I will go to America to see my brother. <clears throat> but who won't see me again? Mitzi, you haven't got a brother. So if I give you money, you'll probably spend it all and then come back and ask for more. <laughs> I saw you with the gun. You give me the money or I call the police. Very well. Here. She was the only one left who knew that, who remembered. My dear woman, Bunny was always muddling people's names. Everyone knew it. Mitzi, for instance, was Millie. She even called you Miss Mabel after the London furniture store. We all found it highly amusing. She was putting you at risk every time she got money. You couldn't take that risk any longer. Any moment, she might give it all away. How dare you, Miss Marple? Get out of my house. Leave. Thank you. 
put me on to it when she showed me the cigarette burn. The threat is grave. You can actually see the bare wire. I mean, he even told all of us at one point that you were holding the vase and not the cigarette box as you would I was hardly round the cigarette box. Philippa had one. She can confirm it. All the eyes were on the clock. As it finished striking, you simply emptied the water onto the bare wire. That was the flash that Bunny saw and fused the light. Very effective. My. You know, when your father died, your sister, Letitia, decided to take you to Switzerland. It was the best place for her. Charlotte had TV. I had the money. I loved it dearly. It was the right decision. You, Charlotte, were cured. However, ironically, Letty caught pneumonia and died. You were frantic because with her death, the Gettler millions slipped through your fingers. Then it occurred to you, you and Letty hadn't been back to England for years. There were big similarities between you. Why not swap your identity with her? My passport, my birth certificate, my bank, we all confirm that I am Letitia. I even have Charlotte's death certificate. You came back to this country. Dora Bunner heard that Letty had returned and contacted her because she needed help badly. So if I was Charlotte, Bunny would have recognized me immediately at any deception would it be impossible? She did recognize you. And then you explained about Randall Gettler and the will, and she actually agreed with you that you had the right to the money and even offered to help you. You were lonely, and here was someone who you had always had a great deal of affection, and she could substantiate your deception. You took the risk. Good. Uh, very good. Everything went well for years. Until a few weeks ago. Then you had some bad luck. You ran into Rudy Schultz, and he recognized you as Charlotte. You knew Belle might die at any moment. And knowing the kind of man that Rudy Schultz was, when the news broke that you had inherited the Gettler millions, <laughs> and him knowing that you weren't Letitia, there was a very good chance that he would blackmail you, and you dare not even allow the smallest chance of that. You I, never get rid of it. I have my methods for dealing with blackmailers, Miss Marple. Yes. When Rudy Schultz came here, for his airfare, it was heaven sent. You said, fine, next Friday is the 13th. I'm giving a party for some of my friends and I want to give them a thrill. You put an announcement in the paper saying that a murder will take place here at 6.30. Then you turn up, I'll fuse the lights, and you pretend it's a hold up. It will scare them sick. Do then I'll pay you your money. Do go on. It's very entertaining. You fused the lights, as I had explained. Then you went out this door, quickly down the passage, but Missy in the dining room came back into the room through this door, shut two shots at yourself, except you weren't there. Oh, then how do you account for one of the bullets nicking my ear? Well, that's too obvious. Everyone knows that an earlobe bleeds profusely when cut. A pair of scissors would do the trick, and then you shot Rudy shirts at point-blank range. I lost 
if I didn't feel some pity for you. Here I am. Tell the inspector all this story. He'll talk it up to the musings of a senile old woman. <laughs> because we both know there's no proof. Oh? No. Do you remember Bunny's favorite quotation and sad affliction bravely born? Switzerland is famous not only for curing TV. In a letter to you from Letitia, she mentioned iodine treatment. It baffled me for a while until I did a little research and I discovered Swiss doctors are famous for perfecting a very, very special glandular operation <laughs> for Goya. And I'm sure that when we check the records, that we will find out it was Lucky and not Lucky that had a successful operation for a Goya. What a pity you interfere, Miss Marple, because you're missing. You're presumed dead. Edward Swetton has stabbed and thrown your body into the river. That you all right, Mr. Meadow, it's all over. You wretch! You evil wretch! Let go of me, Inspector! It's the Inspector that joined me! But that you don't know. It'll be all right, Mr. Marcus. You did very well. All right, everybody, it's all over. Thank you very much. You've no idea what a terrible time I have been through. I shall never forgive you. Never. I'm sorry, Mother. I could hardly tell you what we were up to. You would have never agreed to my doing it. How could you have deceived me like that? I told the inspector I'd help on the condition that I'd be the first one to get all the facts. I'm convinced somewhere in all of this is a fascinating novelty with me. And if I don't do it, somebody else will. What does the inspector want with us this time? He didn't say. He tells me to bring these in. What do you think of my acting, huh? <laughs> Worry about the Mitzi. I think I get especially good when I pretend to blackmail Miss Blacklock. <laughs> I think I will stop cooking and go on the stage. <laughs> uh, I owe you an apology, Mrs. Swetman. I really am sorry, but the fewer the people who knew what I was up to, the better. It's why I couldn't tell you either. But supposing I hadn't come to Edmund's rescue and admitted to being pissed? Well, there was no real danger of that, was there? Well. Now we're all here. I've got a little surprise for you. I thought you'd all be in the mood to enjoy it now. Delicious death. It's already cut. Dig in. Please, Miss Swen. No, thank you. I'm on a diet. Please, Miss Marple. Oh, yeah. uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but. 